In this video we're going to look at how to use your computer as a heater to warm up your house. You can do this because computers produce heat. Uh, they're quite inefficient in their use of electricity. Uh, often 20% gets turned into heat at least. And then the byproduct of the computation is also heat. So almost all the energy that goes into a computer eventually turns into heat. When your computer is not in use, it does use less power by default. But uh, what we're going to do in this video is force the computer to keep busy so that it produces more heat and therefore keeps your place warm. You can keep your computer busy uh, with a number of different uh, programs. I'm going to assume in this video that you want to donate computing power to science to produce the heat. And uh, this can be used on your old computer so that uh, you can use your old computer as a heater instead of throwing it away. To understand how much heat your computer is going to produce, you can look at this little chart. As you can see, uh, netbooks or sub notebooks don't produce much heat and they're not going to be effective as heaters. Uh, some notebooks can produce quite a bit of heat. Uh, but in general not very much. Uh, it's mainly desktops that can produce a lot of heat depending on how they're configured, how many cards are inside such as graphic cards, and they can produce roughly the same as an energy saver heater, about 400 watts. For this video I am going to assume that your computer is connected to the internet, it's running Windows, and it's in good working order with the fans clean and running properly. Uh, every part of it working correctly. This obviously will use some uh, electricity and your electricity bill will be higher but hopefully less than using an ordinary electric heater. Obviously the computer was not designed to be used as a heater so you do carry a certain amount of risk if it burns out because you overheat it or the fans break down and uh, you carry all that risk. Remember that when keeping a computer very busy, it does get very hot and you can burn yourself if you're not careful. The air coming out of the system can be very hot indeed, especially on notebooks or laptops. If you have an Intel computer, you can check how much energy the uh, CPU is going to use. This uh, gives you an indication of approximate amount of heat that will be produced by the CPU alone. Remember there's quite a few components, lots of chips inside the computer, but it's mainly the CPU and the GPU which are going to use the most power. To check what chip you've got inside your computer, you right click on computer and choose properties or choose the win break key combination on your keyboard and it tells you what processor you have. Uh, you can then look on the Intel Arc to see the approximate heat produced by that chip. You can copy and paste the website addresses from the YouTube description. You can install a program to monitor the temperature of the system. And uh, in this example, we're just going to use something called SpeedFan. So you go onto the internet and uh, download uh, the SpeedFan speed program. Uh, version 4.44 is the version here. It uh, requires admin rights. If you don't have admin rights, uh, you might want to use an older version such as 4.42. Once you run SpeedFan, you can monitor the CPU usage, how fast your fans are spinning, and how hot your uh, temperature of your CPU is. If you click on the Exotics tab of SpeedFan, you get to see a different view of that information. If you click on the Smart tab, you can check that your hard drives are not overheating and are still in good shape. If you click on the Configure button in SpeedFan, you can select which item must be shown in the tray. The idea is to monitor which temperature is the highest and once you've worked out which one is the highest you show that one in the tray so that you don't have to have speed band loaded all the time in that window you can have it just in next to the clock 
you are now ready to install Boink. So you go to the Boink website, choose to download the software, ensure you're using the correct download, and install Boink. If you use the advanced view of Boink, it will look something like this. You can view all your projects, such as the World Community Grid. You can see what tasks are being performed within the World Community Grid. Then you can also monitor the amount of bandwidth that's being used. And there are a number of other facilities within the Boink Manager, which I won't cover now. There is on YouTube quite a number of other uh, videos on Boink and you can look at those if you're more interested in using Boink to generate heat or to make a donation of your computer cycles to science. I am producing another video on how to use a version of Linux called Dodge which uh, allows you to run on a USB stick if your hard drive in your computer is broken or you don't have Windows and another video on uh, looking at how to manage some of the heat if you'd like to reduce the heat or if you're having some problems with Boink. Although computers are meant to handle this type of uh, software which can process a lot of data and cause the system to become quite hot, you may find that uh, some systems are faulty or are poorly designed and therefore don't cope with the heat well. Therefore it's important to keep an eye on your settings, the, uh, the speed fan uh, data so that you don't uh, overheat your system or cause any damage whatsoever. Thanks very much for watching this video and I hope it was of help to you.